Hey everybody, this is Anthony for VR Game Rankings and welcome to our daily vlog series. This is episode 36 for Monday, November 20th. And I just have a reminder at the very start of this show, I want to let you guys know that there will not be an episode tomorrow on Tuesday. I will miss that episode. I'm going to be out of town and I won't be able to record an episode, edit it, upload it, do the whole rigmarole so no episode for tomorrow one thing i probably need to do in the future is i probably need to record a show where i'm talking about generalized vr type stuff that isn't time sensitive and kind of basically have a show that's on standby for a rainy day so when i have a situation like this where i got to go out of town or i got to do something i can't do a show have a show in reserve that I can pop on days like this. Unfortunately, I haven't done this already. This is something I need to do going forward for future situations like this, but oh well, just no show tomorrow. I will be back on Wednesday, and I actually have a plan to do an episode even on Thanksgiving Day. So um, I'm planning on doing episodes Thanksgiving Day. I'll, I plan on doing an episode on Black Friday. So I guess that'll kind of make up for it, um, if you will, but uh, no episode for tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get into the news. And the first story that I have this week. Now, first of all, the news is a little bit light. We are into the fourth quarter now. This is November. Not only is it November, but it's relatively late in November. And this is the Thanksgiving week. And, and one of the things that we need to understand about news for the rest of this month and also in December is there's going to be a lot of light news days. And that's just probably going to be the way that it is because what happens is when you get to this late stage in the fourth quarter, when you start getting into the holidays, a lot of companies, they take breaks as well, you know, and, and they have slow periods as well. So we might not get a ton of daily news going forward. So that's just going to be part of the reality as we move through the rest of November and also into December. But there's still going to be lots of stuff to talk about and get into. So still plenty to talk about for this show and for future episodes as well. But today, my number one story is there is a Gunheart, a major update to Gunheart. Now, Gunheart by Drifter Entertainment, this game came out way back, I believe it was July 31st. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that Gunheart released back on July 31st for the Oculus Rift and for the HTC Vive. And when this game came out, it was considered to be a pretty prime time game, like a triple A type of game. I believe the price, I don't know if the price was $39.99, like when it actually came out, or if it's been $34.99 for basically its entire life cycle. But this isn't exactly one of the cheaper VR games out there. It's commanding a relative premium price. And when it first launched, it was kind of known as the Borderlands or the Destiny of VR from the standpoint that this is the kind of game that you're going to want to play with several buddies and you're going to want to go through like three people at a time. I'm not sure if it allows for four people. I know three people can play at a time and you get together and you go through this environment and you have a ton of fun and that's kind of what Gunheart has been about since the very beginning, but there also is single player capabilities. You can fire up Gunheart and you can decide that you don't want to go with anybody else and you can kind of just go at it alone. And I've played Gunheart quite a bit back when it first launched. Uh, the review that I gave was not the most glowing review. Honestly, it didn't really... Um, the truth of the matter is that Gunheart didn't really appeal to me personally so much. It was not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, but I have to take into consideration the price of, of these different games and, and kind of think about the price, think about what it brought to the table as far as I'm concerned. And in a value proposition for me personally, not my type of, not my cup of cup of tea basically but there are different kinds of gamers out there and some of them absolutely swear by gunheart they love gunheart it's one of their favorite games in vr 
and there has been a major fall update and that is what this news is all about and with this major fall update Erwin X was actually the guy that told me about hey man you might want to check out Gunhart again it's been really updated I think he told me that it, it seems like it's almost like a new game like they almost redid the entire game practically and it feels like a real new experience and then of course I saw this news hit like upload VR and other places as well I have not had a chance to jump into Gunheart since hearing about this, but I'm going to try to get into it possibly later today because, you know, I'm I'm cool with Gunheart. I enjoyed what I played with it, and now that there is more content that's been brought to it, it's been polished up a little bit, I'm definitely interested in checking it out. So what exactly is in this new fall update? Well, you have nine new story missions. There are 20 side missions. Almost all of them are completely randomized. So you can kind of do them over and over again. Things will be put into different uh, places and stuff like that. There's new boss fights this time. They uh, have actual boss creatures that you're going to battle. The first new boss you might see is called the Broodmaster. So there are now bosses. You've got a, a new environmental biome to explore, this infested environment. There is a bunch of new mods that you can add. Glass Cannon, Bloodlust, Bubble Shield, Introvenous Bombs, which is kind of cool because you shoot like this grenade thing at an enemy it locks onto them and then it becomes a grenade and explodes and kills other guys you have easy money berserker mod shielded mod flypaper mod so a whole bunch of mods there's a new creature that they've added it's called the spawning bag which is this enemy that as soon as you see it you got to take it out real quick because if you don't it just keeps spawning more and more enemies and so it's something that you're going to have to deal with right away there's 30 new cosmetic items that have that has been added and there's also data pads which are kind of like these tablets that are scattered around the area and you can find these tablets and they'll provide more information about some of the creatures that are in the environment or some of the backstory and stuff like that so if you have Gunheart and you haven't tried it in a long time, this could be a reason to go ahead and check it out. And if you've been interested in Gunheart, but you've not, not decided to jump on the bandwagon, this could be the impetus to maybe jump on it. And so I'm hopefully going to try this out later today and check it out. And hopefully it's really cool. Gunheart is a game with a lot of promise. And there are people that have said that that, that have tried this new update and they said this is how Gunheart should have been from the very beginning. Now remember they did launch in the early access so we have to understand that early access is designed for this sort of thing where you bring out the game early and it might be a little bit rough in spots but you kind of uh, get to enjoy the progression of the game along with the developer as the developer keeps polishing and updating it. Now early access doesn't always work like that. Sometimes early access is more of a shield from criticism than anything else. But in the case of Gunheart, it appears that the early access was definitely a standard early access. And this is the third major update and it probably is worth checking out again. So definitely go ahead and try out Gunheart if you haven't played it in a while. Okay, next news story I have is GFK Chart Track, which is a UK-based website that does... Um, they chart the game sales in the UK, and I believe in the United Kingdom, I believe more accurate game sales figures are widely available compared to how it is here in the United States. In the, in the United States, we have, of course, the MPD, which at there was a point when they were giving out MPD statistics more readily, and then now you can't really get those statistics. And so you have to kind of like do a lot of investigation to try to figure out exactly how games are charting here in the United States. But in the UK, it's more of a wide open thing where they just let people know the way games are charting. And the news is, is that Skyrim VR is selling very well in the UK 
from the standpoint of being a VR game and competing with all these other flat games. So Skyrim VR is currently ranked 19th overall. Now that might not seem like that big of a deal, but for a VR game, it's actually a really high ranking. And one of the comparisons you can make is Skyrim for the Nintendo Switch is ranked at number 26. So the VR version is actually ranked ahead of the Nintendo Switch version. And we know how popular the Nintendo Switch has been. And Skyrim is selling very well on the Nintendo Switch as well. So for it to be ranked higher than the Nintendo Switch version, that does say a lot. And also PlayStation VR Worlds is ranked at the 20th spot right behind Skyrim and ahead of the Nintendo Switch version of Skyrim. And what does the PlayStation VR Worlds thing have to do with anything? Well, the thing is PlayStation VR Worlds is included in many PlayStation VR bundles. And the bundles have been selling like crazy in the UK recently with a lot of these special deals, these new lower prices. There's a lot of fence sitters that have been interested in jumping on a PlayStation VR and the combination of a huge major game like Skyrim VR coming out in collaboration with a price drop has been the impetus to get a lot of these fence sitters to jump off of that fence and jump onto the PlayStation VR bandwagon. And so that's really good news. PlayStation VR seems to be doing very well in the UK. Once again, we don't really have the same kind of information available in the USA quite yet. We have MPD, but we have to wait to get the MPD results. And even then, they don't give you the results unless you want to pay thousands of dollars to get like their detailed charts and all their detailed information. Okay, so the next story we have is Road to VR has a feature story on the haptic, haptic, hapt X VR gloves. Sorry, having a problem pronouncing Haptex. Okay, so Haptex is the name of the company. They actually had a different name. They changed their name to Haptex. And Ben Lang from Road to VR, he was able to go and visit their offices sometime in recently, within the last month or so. And he was able to try the newest prototype for their haptic feedback gloves. And they have, a, you can go to Road to VR. They have a major, you know, they have a big story on this, a breakout story on, on how everything worked, lots of pictures and information about it. And it's definitely worth checking out. And he basically said that putting on this glove, it was kind of like a, a monstrously large contraption. You know how we talk about Magic Leap and when a lot of people try Magic Leap, they say that, you know, it's got all these wires coming out of it. It's this big, gigantic thing. And Ben Lang from Road to, v Road to VR, he kind of uh, was saying some of the similar things about this haptic, this hapt X glove that he tried on. He said that it took a while to get it onto his hand and it was almost like he felt like he was preparing for a medical procedure that it actually required a couple employees to help him get this thing on. So it has not been shrunk down to size. This is the prototype version. This is simply a proof of concept to show that the technology is working and it's doing what they want it to do. And then later on down the line, they will worry about trying to miniaturize it and trying to have different sizes for different hands. That's one of the difficulties that we're gonna to get to in VR. VR has a number of issues from the standpoint that everybody has a different sized head and then people have different sized hands. And so when you start getting into fitting the VR headset properly to people's heads and their, their IPD distances and, and those kinds of things, and then also the different sized hands, when we start to get into gloves and stuff, this is all gonna be part of it. One thing I see, this is kind of a, a side tangent, but I think 20 years from now, when it comes to VR headsets and when it comes to the gloves and the haptic body suits and, and whatever kind of crazy stuff we're going to have, say 20 years from now, I think a lot of it is going to be where you will go somewhere, you'll get measured and you'll basically be custom fitted, almost like getting a prescription for your glasses. You're going to be custom fitted for a lot of this stuff because this stuff is going to be very important and people are going to want the most high fidelity experience they possibly can have with the right IPD and all of that. So I think that's the long term 
thing in the future, like 20 something years from now. But anyway, so he was able to try this glove and the key thing about it is it does appear to work as advertised and the key factor is the micro pneumatics. So basically there are, um, basically what they did. Okay, so Haptex has come up with a way to produce these thin bendable fabrics that are manufactured with a series of tiny air pipes that end with these small little inflatable circles that can then be inflated. And these small little circles are known as haptic pixels. And there's around 100 individual haptic pixels that are on these gloves. And what it does is it will allow you to feel the sensation of possibly say like a spider crawling across your hand or maybe like you're holding your hand out and it's raining and you can feel the pitter patter of raindrops. And so that's kind of the idea here is to bring real world sensations into VR. And then also it has the force feedback from the standpoint where like if you're gripping a baseball, what happens is your uh, the joints basically will lock at a certain point and you won't be able to bend more past the point of where that baseball is. So you won't feel the weight of the baseball in your hand, but when you grab a baseball, you're not gonna be able to grab right through the baseball. You'll grab a, a baseball and it'll lock in like that. So it's gonna have a major factor to increase immersion. Now, what does this mean for the end level VR consumer like you and me? How soon are we gonna get our hands on these kinds of gloves? The truth of the matter is, is that we're not gonna get these for quite some time. This is gonna to go towards the enterprise market first, where companies are using VR headsets to create uh, new designs, to, to try to figure out you know, how to build a new car and, and shape a new car design or a new engine design or all kinds of different things that um, industry is going to be using VR for in the medical field and stuff like this, instead of having to build some special prototype of their own to try to provide those these kinds of haptic feedbacks, this is going to be a ready-made product that is going to work for that kind of market. So this is going to go to enterprise in the beginning. It's going to be incredibly expensive and it is going to take them a lot of work and effort to miniaturize everything that is going on with this gigantic glove that Ben Lang from Road to, v Road to VR was able to try. So this is probably a long distance project uh, product as far as we're concerned and it might show up in the, uh, the arcade VR market at some point before it comes to the consumer market. But long term, this is something to keep our eyes on. We know that gloves eventually are going to become a thing. And hapt <clears throat> Haptex, which is this company here, they've actually said that they believe their long term future is actual body suits where they can design these haptic pixels and have them all over your body where you'll wear almost like a uh, like a wetsuit that will be that will have all these haptic uh, these little pipes and the haptic pixels will be all over it so that it can give you sensations. Like if you get shot in your upper shoulder, you'll feel a sensation right there. I don't know, but you, you got to wonder if we almost get too much feedback, will people actually start having some problems? Will it get too realistic? That's going to be an interesting thing that they're going to have to figure out as we move along. But certainly being able to hold out your hand and, and feel the pitter patter of rain or if you're walking through a jungle, for example, and you're taking your hands and, and you're pushing like leaves and branches out of the way to actually feel something contact you as you push it, that would be really cool and really exciting. So definitely looking forward to these hapt Haptex VR gloves, but certainly far off into the future no question about that. Okay, the last major news story I have for today is the 2017 Golden Joystick Awards gave their award for best VR game to Resident Evil 7. Okay, so this is not the game show awards or the video game awards or, you know, the one with Jeff Keighley. This is different. This is the Golden Joystick Awards. The funny thing is, is I think the nominees 
are exactly the same as that other awards show, which is like December 7th or something like that. It's on a Sunday, I believe. So the nominees that were nominated here, you had Farpoint for PlayStation VR, you had Lone Echo for the Oculus Rift, you have Star Trek Bridge Crew for all three of the major VR platforms, you had Super Hot for all three of the major VR platforms, and then of course you had Resident Evil 7 for PlayStation VR. So those were the nominees, and I'm pretty sure these are the same exact nominees for the Video Game Show Awards, which I'm probably getting that name wrong, but the Jeff Keighley one, I believe these are the exact same nominees. So it's kind of funny they have the exact same nominees. Resident Evil 7 ends up winning this award, and it's kind of interesting that Resident Evil 7 takes home the prize from the, from the standpoint that Resident Evil 7 launched way back in January, and a lot of times, if you have a major game that comes out in January, February, or March, a lot of times these games are forgotten about when you get to the award shows because so many other games have come out since then and you just start to forget about it and it becomes a recency bias type of a situation. So it's kind of impressive to see that Resident Evil 7, despite being the uh, oldest of these games coming out in late January, still takes home the grand prize. Now, obviously, Steve... Um, on VR Roundtable, you know, Resident Evil 7 is his favorite VR game. It's funny, I've never finished Resident Evil 7. And um, I was playing through Resident Evil 7. I have the game, but <clears throat> I don't know what it is. I, I think I've been stuck in a couple spots in Resident Evil 7. And it's just whenever I think about going back into that experience, I don't want to, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. I don't want, it's like when you're stuck in a game, you know you're stuck in a game. You know it's going to take you some time to get out of whatever situation you're in because you don't know what the hell to do. And you're kind of banging your head against the wall. And so sometimes it's easier to just be like, do I really want to bang my head against the wall again or do I want to play something else? This is the same type of situation I got in into with Heart of the Ember Stone at times where, you know, every time I was going into it, I'm just banging my head against the wall on a particular puzzle. The same thing kind of happened a little bit with the Talos Principle in certain parts. And so Resident Evil 7, I'm just stuck in a certain part and I just don't want to go back into it, I guess. And it, it's such a bleak environment. I mean, it's a great game. It's a powerful game. It, it's pretty amazing that there's some really good stuff that's going on in Resident Evil 7, and I really probably should get back to it. It's just every time I think about it, I think, yeah, I'm stuck. And I know that, you know, it's going to take me a while to get out of whatever situation I'm stuck in. So I haven't gone back to Resident Evil 7, which is kind of crazy. But I could see it winning the Game of the Year award for VR. I mean, there's no question about that. So that wraps it up for the news. Now we're at the 23 minute mark of this news program and I don't want to go too much longer but you know what I'll just talk real quick because there's been a lot of Skyrim talk I talk about Skyrim on today's release of VR Roundtable our newest episode episode 62 a VR Roundtable is available today, so definitely go ahead and bounce over to the VR Roundtable YouTube channel. Check that out. And we spend some time talking about Skyrim on that episode. We also talked about Payday 2 VR on that episode. And just real quick, I'll say Skyrim, you know, my thoughts might might sound like it's a little bit negative because I had a lot of complaints about the controls and I was talking about the graphics and I was talking about how there's such a such a um, wide divide basically between the graphics being incredible and the graphics being like really awful at times and it, it's just a weird thing how it works out like that and the unfortunate thing is is somebody can hear that and they just think I'm coming off negative and they're like what why is this guy negative to Skyrim VR I mean what is he like graphics aren't everything man well no I'm not trying to be negative about it what I'm trying to say is that I just try to give my honest, real takes, okay? And the, and whatever it is, is whatever it is. I'm just going to be honest about it. I still love Skyrim VR. I mean, well, I'm 
bare, barely into the game. I mean, I've barely scratched the surface. That's the thing. I've only played Skyrim. I played it on Friday. I played it Saturday and I played it Sunday, but only in small bursts because I had to do other things. I'm doing other things. I'm playing other games, Payday 2 VR, and I have to do some other stuff. I have a family, I have a wife, I have kids, and so I can't just spend endless hours in Skyrim VR. So I haven't gotten that far into the game yet. I haven't been in a ton of different dungeons. I haven't explored a ton of different environments. I haven't battled a ton of different monsters. So I've barely scratched the, scurf, the surface of Skyrim VR. And all I can do is give my initial take on it. And and honestly, the graphics are kind of all over the map with that game, but there there's beautiful stuff. I mean, there's some absolutely drop dead gorgeous type of scenes that unfold. And it, it really, what it really comes down to is if you want to look for the flaws, you will find the flaws, trust me, okay? But eventually, you'll forget about that. And eventually, you'll just get caught up in the world of Skyrim, especially the go anywhere nature of the game. And you'll get to a certain point where you'll just forget about looking for the flaws and you'll just start enjoying the game for what it is. And you'll come over some mountaintop and you'll see a vista and it will just look magnificent. And so that's that's how it, it, it can vary so dramatically in, in the looks of it. And the controls, I'm still struggling with the controls. I'm really trying to learn how to play this game using two moves. And, and sticking with that and not giving up on that. But I was playing it yesterday and man, I was tempted to go to the DualShock 4. And the reason why, it's not so much the actual plane of Skyrim. What it is, is when you want to, like you're over encumbered, like you pick up too many items and you need to drop something that has a heavy weight. It's navigating the menus. That's where the real problem is for me. What I've had to do lately is I'm holding my two move controllers, right? And I get to the point where like there's one button that you can hit where you're scrap like you're you're searching a dead body, right? For for gold or for any valuables that this dead person might have on them. And you can hit the triangle button to take all. So you take all of their stuff. And I have a habit of just hitting that triangle button. The problem with that is they might have some big battle axe or something that weighs 25 pounds or 25 units of weight. And now you're over encumbered and you can't run. And so I hit triangle, which is easy enough to do with your little move controllers. And I add all that inventory, but then it gives me a message. You are now over encumbered. You cannot run. And so now you're moving like a snail. And so you know that you have to drop something. You have to go into your inventory. You have to find something that's relatively heavy that might not be worth that much and drop it so that you can now run and you can walk at a normal speed. And that's the hardest part because trying to navigate that with the move controllers it, I just haven't gotten the feel for it yet still. So what I do is I actually keep my DualShock 4 relatively close to me and I end up putting my move controllers down, picking up my DualShock real quick and just navigating the menu real quick just so I can find something that's heavy that I can drop so that I'm not over encumbered. So that's an example of something that I'm having to do with the controls. And if you're juggling two move controllers and a DualShock 4, it just becomes a real hassle and it, it really can be quite irritating. So that is a little bit of a problem with Skyrim VR, but but man, it's a magnificent game and there's just so much to it and I'm just barely scratching the surface. So we'll definitely have plenty of more Skyrim talk and I'll also probably talk a little bit more about Payday 2 VR. I've been playing that as well. Okay, so here I am and I'm damn near at 29 minutes because I started talking about Skyrim. So we're gonna go ahead and call this episode 36. Yes, it is episode 36 of our daily vlog series for Monday, November 20th. And once again, there will not be a daily vlog tomorrow. So check us out on Wednesday, November 22nd. We will be back with the daily vlog series. So I'll see you guys then. So take it easy. Later.